Jesus. That's why he's in there. Hebrews, the sixth chapter. First verse. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection. If, the, if you couldn't do it, he wouldn't ask it of you. If it could not be accomplished, he would not ask it of you. Not laying again the foundations of repentance from dead works and faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of the laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. This we will do, if God permit. He was speaking to a people that were held in the principles of the doctrine. Because they couldn't get past the repentance for dead works. Dead works are the things that we do that have no, that have no bearing on our progression to perfection. Dead works are the things that are offered by the old life. <clears throat> he said we cannot, and, and, and this is beyond where we've been. He said, if we move on, to baptism before the breaking of the old man. What we do is we make the gifts an addition to the wrong life. If we move on in that old life to the gifts, it becomes an addition to me. And I become, 1 Corinthians 13, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and have not charity, I become as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal, of no value. There is only one definition of perfection. It is God in complete dominion. Isaiah, the ninth chapter, says the government shall be upon his shoulders. That's your life. That's your life. We come to a place, sometimes in our thinking, where we believe God is in complete control. And that the day of the rapture, all is well. Everything's all right. And God is going to guide and do it. But if God can't move me on Wednesday morning, if He's not the government in my life, He will not be the government in my life on that day either. Mm -hmm. When God is in complete dominion of the vessel, it is then that God's purpose is for the gifts to be employed and brought forth at that point in time. <laughs> Understanding that the gifts given to, to us in transition are not contradictions to God's purpose. God gives us the gifts in our present truth for the purpose of bringing us into the fullness of His truth. But that journey must be progressive, or we make the gifts the destination. And God does not send us gifts for that purpose. There are those that are today in true submission to God with an authentic operation of the gifts. Not perfect, but certainly perfect where they stand. Submitted to God where they stand. And God gives us these for this pro progressive journey to take us farther. But here's what happens to us. In my upbringing, in the church upbringing, 
I was taught that you need, first of all, to be saved. And it meant more then than it does today as far as the vocabulary of the church. You need to be saved through repentance, born again. Then you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. That's great. That's right. That's absolutely right. But the problem was nobody told me anything beyond that. Nobody told me, well, why or why? What, what's God want after that? Or, that was, as far as I was concerned, and as far as the foundation of that church was concerned, that was what God wanted. In that definition, we define the move of God by the operation of gifts. That's how we defined it. If we were to, to define re, uh, revival, we would say, you bring in an evangelist who, who gets us worked up to, to, uh, to the point where there's an operation of gifts. We built and build the, the structure of the full gospel church around these perimeters. We put together the staff of the church toward bringing us to this place. And when we have this service, we get up and we would go home feeling like God had confirmed that we are indeed the chosen. And when that run out, we'd go back and look for God to do it again. And I'm talking about, in many cases, a genuine move of God with the authentic moving of the gifts. In many cases, it was not. But in many cases, it was. But the problem was, we had gifts operating, but there was no power. No power. No power. And the reason for that is we were... We were maybe farther down the road than somebody else, but we had become entrapped in yesterday's principles. And when you become entrapped in yesterday's principles, what we do is we design the whole system to go some a distance and stop. We design everything to move to this point and quit. When God is boundless and, 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 and any time that the progression of our revelation of God comes to a stop, it doesn't make any difference how far down the road we might be. When it stops, it is because the wrong life is in control. Even though it was legitimate and, can, and, and, and may even still be fully legitimate at the point that we come, that we think this is what God wants. Oh yes, God wants us to, to uh, jump and to run and, and, and to fall and to, and, and to see all of these things uh, uh, take place in the church. And I'm not saying they're wrong, but what I am saying to you is if God's knocking them down, it won't be the same man or woman that gets up. I'm saying to you, if God lays hands upon the sick, they shall recover. I'm saying that if it's God, there will be a difference and we won't do the same thing with the same one next week. We become entertained with the gifts. And we're stuck in the principles. Progression is stopped and the wrong life is in control. And then what happens is the purposes of, of the church become the purposes of man, and our purpose is just to go to the church and jump and run and speak in tongues. When God's purpose is that the life of God would so fill us and fill that church that it would flow out and the world would be touched.